Well, we welcome you to today's reflection on the gospel. <clears throat> Today is also the remembrance of the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King. And so we also keep in our prayers the work of nonviolence, the gospel of nonviolence, and that through that gospel that the peace that God so desires for his world may indeed be embraced and achieved. And today's gospel comes to us from the gospel of Mark. The disciples of John and the, of the Pharisees were accustomed to fast. People came to Jesus and objected. Why do the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth on an old cloak. If he does, its fullness pulls away. The new from the old and the tear gets worse. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the skins are ruined. Rather, new wine is poured into fresh wineskins. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A number of years ago, I happened to attend a wedding of a friend of mine and my friend's brother was the officiant uh, of the wedding. He's a priest, uh, not of our diocese, but a priest family member, obviously, who was called upon to both officiate at the wedding as well as preach. And so here is his priest preaching at his brother's wedding. And for the first five minutes, well, it may not have been quite that long, but it seemed that long to me, for the first five minutes, the priest went on at his brother's wedding citing statistics about divorce, separation. And he went on and on and on about failed marriages. So after a number of minutes, I'm listening to this and I'm saying, my gosh, what a downer. If I was to get married and my brother, the priest, was going to talk to me about all the possibilities of divorce and uh, how statistically uh, prevalent it is and even statistically <laughs> perhaps unavoidable, I would have said, okay, call off the wedding, that's it. I wonder why this priest happened to be talking about divorce at a wedding. Was it just simply, you know, open everybody's eyes, how beautiful all this is, but remember, divorce can happen and you better watch out. Why the negativity? Today's gospel, Jesus is asked about this question about fasting. He's told that the disciples of John the Baptist and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, and your disciples don't fast. Like, what's up with that? And Jesus says, we're at a wedding right now. We're at a wedding. This is a time to rejoice. This isn't a time to be in that moment of, of uh, desolation when we're recognizing that we need God and, and, and consolation or, or we need to uh, repent or whatever. We're in this moment of union and communion with our God. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, and it's present in me, the bridegroom, Jesus is saying. There's no need to fast. There's no need to be deprived of the blessings which God is pouring forth. I'm wondering why it was so important for these disciples of John the Baptist 
and the disciples of the Pharisees to bring this question up to Jesus in the first place. Maybe as they watched Jesus and all of the crowds and the cheering and the uh, publicity, there was this underlying fear, don't trust good news. Don't trust good news. Oh, you're going to be uh, sorry someday the rug is going to be pulled out from underneath you. Don't trust good news. This is too good to be true. Maybe we need the good old-fashioned fasting in order to remind ourselves that at any moment things can go wrong. Such was the approach of the uh, of this priest who was preaching at his brother's wedding. Now, let's not get too happy about my brother getting married. Now, maybe he knew something about uh, his future sister-in-law. I don't know. But whatever it was is don't trust good news here. Got to be wary of it. And maybe that was the feeling of the disciples of John the Baptist. Remember, the disciples of John the Baptist suffered much because they followed John. And now John is arrested so much for trying to follow someone. Eventually, the bad guys win. John the Baptist is arrested. I can't trust anybody now who's going to be delivering God's message. The question which Jesus is being asked to weigh in on, it's not a question about fasting. It's a question about, do you trust good news? Do you trust what God is doing right now in your midst? Are you so filled with disappointment because of the things that didn't always work out the way you had hoped for or imagined? Are you so filled with disappointment that you walk away and saying, well, this is too good to be true. I'm not going to trust it. I'd be better be on my guard. Jesus is addressing you and me in moments when maybe we really do want to rejoice because we feel the presence of the bridegroom. We feel some so sort of consolation. Ah, oh, but better watch out. Bad things are around the corner and it's going to creep up upon you unawares and take you in a moment's notice. Things can turn bad. And people live in that constant state of being on edge. Any moment, things can turn bad. You better watch out. Jesus, though, says something very important here. He does admit the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them and they will fast on that day. Yeah, sometimes things do turn south. Sometimes things don't always work out. Sometimes the bridegroom is taken away. And sometimes, yes, there's crucifixion. But even in the midst of crucifixion, even in the midst when the bridegroom is taken away, even in the midst when things turn sour, God wins. And that's the new wine that Jesus is proposing, which needs to be poured into new wineskins, to stand confident in the proclamation of the good news that the kingdom of God has arrived. So the image I'd like just to use with you to close with is simply this. Imagine you wake up early and you go outside and it's still dark out but you start to see the first glimmers of dawn. The sky looks beautiful, looks magnificent. All of the colors that you see of the dawn. You haven't seen the sun rise yet, but you know for sure the sun will rise. But you're rejoicing in that moment of the dawn. What a beautiful day it's going to be. Ah, look at the colors. Look at the, the, the 
beauty of the sky is it begins to move from deep, deep, deep blue now to various hues caused by the soon to emerge sun. That's where we are today. The kingdom of God has arrived. We're still in the dawn of that kingdom. It hasn't fully taken over the whole world yet. But the kingdom of God has arrived. It's not a matter that the world now is going to go back into pre-dawn. Once the dawn has started, the sun will rise. Standing in that confidence, despite the disappointments you've had, and even the fears that the rug could be pulled out from under your feet at any given moment, God wins. Rest in that assurance today. God wins. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. God bless you all and have a good day.